Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show an intro to art journaling. Now, art journaling is anything that you can put on a page, art in a journal. I'm going to show you some basic techniques and basic supplies. The key is to get a good journal. Now, if you don't want to use a bound book, you can use a series of mixed media or watercolor paper. You just need to have paper that's heavy enough to hold your medium. So if you like to use markers or paint or collage, just make sure your paper is heavy enough for that. If you want your art journal to be filled just with text, similar to a diary, with maybe some sketches in either ballpoint pen or pencil, well, almost any journal will work because you just need to find your paper that will hold that medium. I'm going to show you how I use acrylic paints in my art journal. I like acrylic paints because I purchase them in the matte formula, and that way when the journal is closed, after the paint is dried, it doesn't stick together. You might find other paints work better for you, but this is just one technique, and I'm going to show you it today. So if I was starting all over from the beginning, and I had absolutely no supplies, these are the supplies that I would use. A couple of paint brushes, a good journal, and some matte acrylic paint. I'd also use a pencil and maybe some markers or gel pen for afterwards, and I'll show you that technique as well. Now the best way to show you what an art journal really is, is to show you my vast array of them. Because art journals can mean different things to different people, or they can mean different things to the same person. So I have art journals that are designed simply for me, that I can learn from. They're not journals that I show to other people. They're really just my notes, my process for learning different topics and for planning my curriculum. From there, when I'm done with that, I'll paint over them. So my final layer becomes the actual art journal itself, where I'll paint over those notes and create a painting, either abstract or just something fun. And then I have a book of those images. I also have art journals where I practice collage techniques, and I've shown you some of them before, and I'll show you a little glimpse of them as well. I also show you some journals that are a little more emotional. I kept a COVID journal, and so I'll show you a little glimpse into that as well. So there are different reasons to keep an art journal. If you can figure out the reason you want to keep an art journal, and it doesn't even have to be that deep, you might just want to play in it. That's totally fine. That's a wonderful reason to keep an art journal. Or maybe you want to keep an art journal because you're intrigued by it, but you're not really sure where to start. Well, this video is for you. So let's get started. I'll show you my art journals, and then I'll show you the process of creating a page. So at any one time, I have over a dozen art journals going, and I tend to prefer these journals by Delusions, a Ranger product. So they come in all shapes, I have the square ones, the rectangular ones, and what I like about them is they have these bands on some of the smaller ones. I don't particularly care for the bands. I think they serve a purpose though. They have a pocket, but what I buy them for really is the paper. It's a very heavyweight paper, so I can paint in it, or I can use marker or pen, and it's not going to bleed. The page is substantial, and it doesn't tend to warp. And if it does warp, it warps a little, but any paper would. This one's the same idea. It's got that band around the outside, the pocket here, and the pages. And this is a square format, so I find this very helpful. Now the ones that I use the most often are these larger ones. So if this is eight by five and a half inches, this one's 11 and three quarter inches by eight and a half inches. So it's much larger. Now these are the ones that I use for my work. And my journals go through a series of renditions. So when they start out, I tend to use them to take notes. So I'll actually write in them with text. And then I might do some sketching. I tend to reinforce the spine on the pages. Maybe not every page, depends on my mood, and sometimes I'll go through the journal ahead of time and just put some masking tape down to reinforce the pages or some paper tape. And I'll just take notes, and these are ideas for my curriculum. If I have another project in mind, like when I went for a walk and I saw these turtles at the turtle park, I started to be inspired and wanted to learn more about them. So I started making sketches and I started doing research online and recording my notes here. And then I took out some colored pencils and played around with the turtle shells because I was drawn to that, the patterns and the colors and so on. 
And then the same thing with the alligator. Now from here, I really was fascinated by that alligator eye. I saw an alligator in the park. I looked up information on the alligator. I wrote it down. I wasn't worried about my penmanship looking any particular way. If you really want to spend time and make your words and everything a form of art, that's wonderful. And some people do that for their journals and it's spectacular. You just have to find your style. So for right now, this rendition, I have my sketch of the alligator eye. And then I took it from there and I wanted to make it out of fabric. So I made a fabric page based on this sketch that I made based on my research, based on that walk in the park. So that's how I use it in my work. Now, not all my pages are pretty. They're just a bunch of ideas. I have paintings here. I'm still tinkering with the idea of somehow, somehow making a camera out of fabric. And again, this is more just my notes for me. Some more sketches here from a video I did on creating a book based on faces and so on. And so I have all these little different notes within the piece. Some drawings, some are very simple. And then I can color in some when I'm ready. So I have another page here where I went to town. I worked on it. I still have my facts. Fascinating the eye again here and the shape of the shark. I came up with another page based on that. So this is how it transpires. These are the steps that my research takes. And I'll go through and use any page in my book for all different things. These books for my work aren't dedicated to any particular subject. These are just my learning books. I guess you could call it a commonplace book of sorts. And I have about four or five of them in the works currently. And again, they're all that idea that I'm just playing around with different things. No two pages look alike. There are some blank pages and I'll fill them in when I'm ready. And I just work on different things that I'm working on at the time. Some pages after I've used the notes, I'll start to paint over and hide those notes after those notes have no longer become valuable. And then it starts to look more like a traditional art journal. Here, you can barely see some notes in the background. And I started to cover it just with various colors. And then I'll work on patterns later. Some pages, I really like the way they look and I'll keep it just like that, at least for now. I still might change my mind. And so I have all these different ideas that I'm currently working on. I keep all these books at the ready so that I can refer back to them, find out what I need, and then just add to them when I'm in the mood. But they're all different stages of my learning process. A couple of things that I like to really work on in my journals. So these are my learning journals. These are not for show or um, necessarily work that's masterpieces, just things that I enjoy and that I learn from. Now here's a series of my other journals. I basically learned from all of them, but that wasn't necessarily the intention of the rest of them. The rest of them are fairly dedicated. And by that, I mean each one has its own topic. I have journals besides, but these are just the ones that I felt would be helpful for this video. So for this book, I showed a short video where I showed one of the paintings, the process of the painting, but it's just acrylic painting and it's all just patterns. And I'm not even sure if I have this on the right side, if it's upside down or not, but it's really just about the patterns and playing with color. And I just use acrylic paints and maybe some gel pens or markers. So if this is the type of art journal that you'd like to create, you find a book your size that you want. And this one's watercolor paper um, by Field Artist. I think I got this on Amazon. It's just a small little book. The pages are three and a half inches square. And I just played around with making two page layouts for the entire book. Again, I used acrylic paints and I'll go over more of that when I show you the process. The reason I choose acrylic paints is because I look for the matte finish and the pages don't tend to stick together. And if they do stick together, it's a minor adjustment to remove them, to pull them apart. Here's the painting that I did in the video for the shorts with this book. 
This book is where I'm working on my collage. So I take painted papers that I've created, or maybe some that I've found, and I make collage pieces on both of the pages. And I'm doing this by color in this book. By working with color, it just helps me to figure it out, really. So this is a learning book for me, but I also want the aesthetic here. Now I keep pieces of wax paper on the pages because of the adhesive that I used, even though it's a matte adhesive, it tends to stick a little bit. And the wax paper prevents that sticking. I can just easily remove that wax paper. I have this little book and you can see the quality of the paper isn't as good as the books I showed earlier, but that's not a problem either. It's very lightweight paper and I just painted with some acrylic paint. I was really working on just flowers. So I painted some flowers from some postage stamps that I found and I wanted to like work on the colors and just get a feel for the actual painting itself. So while I like the paintings, the book itself is really just a reference for me. All these different paintings, and I have the colors here that I could refer back to. So that's another method of creating an art journal, is taking a theme, in this case, flowers. And particularly ones that I painted myself, instead of collaging, or tracing, or cutting out. I showed a video where I have this little nature journal. These are little things that I found in nature that I keep inside this journal. It's three-dimensional. I also do some sketching in it. I include some paper because I just love that aspect, that embellishment. And I continue to add to this, whether I'm on my walks and I find something, or I get an idea, or I learn something, I'll add it in here. You can check out the video for the extended version of this. Now during the pandemic, I started keeping a journal well, pretty much like everybody else, we're looking for things to do that were involved being home, nesting, and that type of thing. So I created things. I made a little piece that I printed for my computer, and then I started sketching. I did research of previous pandemics, and I found that little mask, which is kind of creepy, um, but I was intrigued by it, the plague doctor. So I included information on that, spent a little bit of time creating that, piece just on some paper that would fit inside this little book. I didn't want this book to be a full art journal. There was something about giving it that space in my home. I didn't want to do that for the pandemic. I thought it took enough from us. So I just made a little journal. The journal helped me just recording different things about what happened and transpired during that time little things for seeing family, the garden I kept, these type of things that were a big part of my life at the time. Truthfully, I don't tend to go back to this journal very much because as great as it was to have survived and had so much of an outcome, there was so much negative and so much with that happened during that time that it, it's painful to look back on. We lost friends and family. But that's another th reason to keep a journal, is because it helps you work through different emotions. This one I've shown before. I create circles, and I fill them with different prints that I make with stencils and acrylic paint. And really what I'm doing is playing with combinations of color. So you can check out that video as well. I have this little book. I call it an art journal. It's not really a journal. But it's a nice book, and I just record things books that I read it during a time, birthdays from the family, my tennis team, meals that were favorites, and this type of thing. And I also do samples. So it's a form of art journal, not necessarily because I do art, but because the images and the memories and the combination of things that I've cultivated inside this journal are a form of art. I just took a journal and put stickers on it. Now I also keep this type of art journal. This is a different book altogether. It's a lighter weight paper and I do a lot of dry brushing on this and I also use markers. It's actually gridded paper like this and I just work on patterns. So I'll just play with some patterns. I don't do heavy painting on this. 
It's a bunch of mark making and different elements that I can add to my journal. And I can use in various paintings. I'll play with brush strokes and see what I come up with, making different patterns. So art journals really are very vast in what you can do with them. You can collage, paint, play, record events, or you can do all of it. So let me show you some techniques for getting started. So now to get started, I'm using acrylic paint in my journal. If you'd like to use pencil or ballpoint pen or ink, markers, colored pencil, crayon, any of those, perfectly fine. The art journal is for you. With different supplies, different medium, you might need to do different things. For example, colored pencils, after you draw on the paper, when you close the book, they tend to transfer. So you get some spray that you can seal the colored pencil in you go outdoors, you make, you spray your paper, you let it dry, and then when you close the book, you don't get that transfer. It might happen with graphite of a pencil as well. Markers, you don't usually get the transfer once it's dry, but it can bleed through the paper, so make sure you use the appropriate paper. Watercolors, the same thing. I like to use this journal, and I'll link it below, but you don't have to use this journal. The pages are eight and a quarter inch square, and there are 48 of them. You'll find that the lifespan of your journal for working on it really varies with how many journals you have, how often you work on it, and so on. So I have my journal and I have my craft paints. Now the one thing I look for is that they say matte. They don't say satin or they don't say enamel or all purpose. They're expressly used for paper. They can be used on other surfaces, but I like that matte finish and that way my pages don't stick together. I have an assortment of varieties here. Craft Smart is the generic, Apple Barrel, Folk Art, anything goes, as long as it's the matte craft paint. I choose my paints, making sure that they're matte, just based on the color that I like. I keep two jugs of water, mainly off camera because I don't have a lot of space, a larger jug to clean my brush, and a smaller jug if I need to have a clean, pristine brush. I also have an abundance of paper towels and rags to clean my brush. And then I have two or three brushes. I have more brushes, but I tend to stick with two or three. I have a long flat brush, about an inch in length, a thinner brush, I think this is a number four brush. And then I have just this children's brush. This brush is rough, it's actually plastic. It came with a kid's art set. I think there came two or three of the brushes. It's very cheap. It cheap. It makes very um, interesting lines. They're very, there's a lot of striations. You get brush strokes because of the shape kind of round. I can stamp with it. So I enjoy that. I have a pencil. You can use any type of pencil to create your marks. The beauty of acrylic paint is it covers most things. So you can use a marker if you like. I have a little reused here. I'm recycling this cap to use as my palette. I have a little bottle cap here because I like circles in my work. So I'll dip it in with paint and stamp it on my work. I have clips to hold open my book, which I find very valuable. And then I just have an assortment of stencils. Now I have about a four inch thick piled high pile of stencils, but I tend to choose stencils that have just patterns, not particularly um, a saying or anything like this. I like numbers and I like letters and I just use them it just on a whim. Now here's a stencil that I don't use very often. It has different um, patterns, different shapes. You can use a stripe here or just a pattern and I tend to use just parts of it. But it's a fun stencil to have. So you don't need to spend a lot in terms of stencils and you don't even need to use them if you don't want to. So now I want to set up my book. So I just open to a page that I want to start with. Now the front page usually is bound a little tighter, so I usually don't start on that page. I might start in the center of the book. It really depends on your personality. My personality is kind of just go with it. So I'll start with the center of the book here. And I like to open it flat, and then I just clip it with these clips, just enough to keep the pages open because I have so much paper on this side of the book, I don't need to clip this side. But I want to make sure that this side lies flat. So I'll just probably clip both sides just near the edge. 
So if you have something in mind that you want to create, a particular subject or object, go right ahead and make a sketch, do your research, find something you want to recreate in your own version, your own style. I'm going to play around on this page just with patterns. Now this is something I typically don't start off with on the blank page, but this is how it ends up after I've researched, done my writing, when I want to start making my book into an art journal, I will cover all my work with these techniques. So before I actually start the painting or even the sketching, I want to take some wax paper. This is paper that I've used a number of times and I'll just set it behind my pages. And this is just to prevent the paint from seeping through. It still might seep through, but this does a good job, a fairly good job preventing that. Now, instead of these, instead of this smaller sheet, which I'm reusing, you could take a full sheet that will go behind the page nicely. And just set it down and then reapply your clips. Now I've chosen some colors here and I don't really have a particular way that I choose colors. If I know what I'm drawing, if I'm, for example, creating a Santa Claus face, I know I'll be needing flesh color and some reds and whites, but if I'm not really sure where to start, I'll just go to my area where I keep my paints and choose colors. I'll choose four or five colors and I, if they don't go together, I'll put one back and grab another one. So I love blues, so I always start out with a blue and then I choose a couple of neutrals. So I have a gray here and a white. Could use, I could have used a tan or a beige or a very pale green as well. And then I chose two colors to really make it pop, that orange and that yellow. And I might still add more colors as I go, but this is a good start for me. So from here, I like to take my big brush and I'll just start adding paint to my page. You can color the entire page with that intention or you can just add paint as you go. And so that's what I like to do. Just add some paint here and there. And I tend to treat the pages as one big layout. Of course, you can vary this. You don't have to do that. But when I come to the edge of the page, I make sure I have my paper and I just brush always in the same direction off the page. The same thing up top here. I'll always brush up. That just gives me a little more control, a little less um, seepage underneath the page. Same thing on the sides here. So I'll just fill in the background with an assortment of colors. I'll switch to this light blue. I don't even bother to rinse out my brush. I'm using a nice thin coat and it's acrylic paint, so it will dry fairly quickly. And again, when I go to the edge, I always brush off the page and I'll just continue filling this up. I usually work with about three colors on the background. So I have my gray and my blue. I'll add some more blue over here. Then I'll choose one more color. So up top here, I think I'll go in with this yellow. So now I have my paint down. If you can see, if I gently remove the clips, that area is not painted. So I'll usually take off one clip at a time. When I have this mostly done, I'll come back and just touch up that area. You can wait for the paint to dry. You can force it dry with a hair dryer or a heat gun. But I'm just going to start building on it because this is an abstract piece and I just want lots of layers. So at this point, I'm going to rinse out my brush. Now it's important to not let the paint dry on the brush because the acrylic paint is a lot like plastic and it will dry and solidify on that brush. But I'm going to start building up my layers now. I can add additional layers of color. I still have more colors on my palette I can use, the white and the orange. But right now I'm just going to create layers with the stencil. So I like to start by taking one of my larger stencils here, and that would be either one of these, because of the area that it leaves the stencil mark, it's fairly large. I think I'll start with this one. Now for this technique, you can use a brush, but I like to use a makeup sponge. And I'm gonna just jump right in with that orange. So I dab a little bit off on the makeup sponge, and then I choose where I want my stencil to go. 
Now purposely, I look for areas where there's seams, or what I call seams, which are just areas where this overlaps the different shapes and colors that I've made. So I'll take the stencil and put it over there and just dab it on, making an additional layer over those seams. It kind of hides some errors and it softens the look. And so that's really interesting to me. I love how that looks. And now I'll just play around with it. I tend to stick with odd numbers. So I'll do three or five areas with this stencil. And I also like to turn my pages in different formats. I still have the wax paper on the side here so that if I stamp off the page, it's okay. It's not gonna stamp on the book. And even if it does stamp on the book, well, that's okay too but I am trying to avoid it at first. Now to avoid a straight line, I'm purposely bringing that stencil over in different areas. So it looks very organic shaped. Maybe I'll put a little bit here. And now when I remove the stencil, I have the beginnings of a page forming. So I'll do the same thing with the next stencil and I go down in size. Now because I have three fairly large shapes. Maybe I'll work on smaller shapes here. So that I'll take another makeup sponge. I'm going to go in with the turquoise this time. And again, I'm keeping in my mind those seams. And I might even want to go over some of the areas I've already put, like right down here. I think I just might want to kiss up against it. So that's very interesting to me. And I'm just playing around with it. Now this is acrylic paint and the beauty of that is that if I don't like the way it looks, once it's dry, I can paint over it. So now, if you're somebody who likes to have your stencils nice and clean, I'd have a little tub of water that you could slide these into. I'm not that person. I let the paint dry on my stencil. If there are globs of paint, like over here, I have a little bit more paint than I usually allow, I'll just wipe it off. But I don't mind my stencils covered with paint. When I set them aside to fully dry, I just have to be aware of where I'm putting them because any paint that's sticking out will leave residue on a surface. So now you can decide if you wanna add more stencils or you just wanna move on to a different technique. I'm gonna add a few of these letter stencils. I love using text in my work. So I'm happy with the way that looks. Now I wanna take my brush here. This is my big, thick, plasticky kids brush. And I'm just gonna create some shapes. I'm gonna to go to that white. I haven't used the white yet. And I'll dab it off on my palette. Don't want too much white on the brush. And now I can just play around with leaving marks. And so I have a few marks there, but I think they really need to be clustered. So I'll add a little more pigment and make a little bit more of a cluster here. Just playing around even drag the brush so it looks a little distressed even. Now I'm going to switch to that gray and just play around. I love the edges here how they just kind of fade in and out just from dragging that brush. And again, when I'm done, when I'm pretty happy with the way that looks, I'll clean that brush. So now I think the last layer I'm gonna make with the acrylic paint is to take this cap, I think I'll put it in the blue, that light blue that I have. And now I'll just make some circles on my work. Some coming off the page. And again, this is all about adding layers. So now I'm pretty happy with the way my acrylic paint looks. I'm just gonna take a little bit of a brush here, take some of that yellow and finish up that little area that I left plain because I had the clip on it. The weight of the paper um, from the paint and from opening that book has changed it a little bit. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come in with a black marker and just add something extra to it. At this point, I wanna gently remove the wax paper. 
just pull it off and let it dry. And you can see I have a little seepage here, but not too much. I'll do the same thing over here. Just remove that paper and let this dry. So now when your book is dry, when all the paint is dry, you can decide if you're ready to continue or you're happy to stop there. Now you could stop there and return another day in the future when you either have time or you figured out something you'd like to put on it, or you could add yet another layer. Now I like to add layers with black ink or black paint. If I'm using an acrylic pen, this is an acrylic paint pen, it's the kind that you, you shake to get it activated and then it draws just like a pen, but it's acrylic paint. So if I was to make some kind of line, it gives a beautiful opaque line and it's just more acrylic that I'm adding to it. You can use a permanent marker. I wouldn't use a Sharpie. The alcohol and the acrylic paint don't interact well. This is a permanent archival ink. The trouble with this though is the texture from the acrylic paint eats through these markers. So I will use it in a pinch, but it's not my ideal method. I also like to use gel pens. Those are fantastic and those come in all colors. The beauty of the gel pen is it creates just such a beautiful image and if you have white or black or any color you want, it really shows up up against that acrylic paint. So it's quite nice. If I take my acrylic pen or my paint, which I have here, I might play around with using the shapes I've already created. So I might enhance them further. I might outline them, just emphasize them, maybe just some of them. If I have a series of shapes, I might continue them with the dark. So here I have circles, just add a few more. And this is how I play around with it. I really like the addition of those extra layers. It just adds so much more interest to my piece. So here I have a curved line. It kind of imitates the curve I have here, but it stops. So I wanna really continue that. And it draws the eye up the page. So there's so much you can do just with adding another layer with acrylic pens, because you have a lot of control that way, or the gel pen. Now, if you want to actually add a sketch, a recognizable sketch to your work, you can do that as well. And I think I just want to do that with an outline of black, although I could get out my acrylic colors and create a little scene here as well. So I think I'm going to add like a rose. So I'll see how that goes. I'll just create some petals. Very abstract, very simple. And I'm just using my pencil here. So I'm creating like the stamens, make it come to a point. And then the stem, a little leaf there. So there I have just a very abstract rose. I'll take my paint this time just to show a little variation. And I'm using that number four brush with that very sharp point. And I'll just create those shapes tracing over the lines I made with the pencil. Then I'll take that brush while I have it out, maybe just make some marks. So really this art journal is just about how I'm feeling at the moment, how much paint I want to use, if I want to dig out more colors, if I want to restrict myself to just a few colors. I love the pop of black and white on top of the final painting, just the final layers. So now I'll just see, I think I want to add another line just to make that line work. Maybe I'll have it coming down from here. So there I have one layout in my new art journal. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I could continue going and make another realistic image, smaller rows, some petals falling off. Well, that looks good to me. So that's my process for creating an art journal with minimal supplies. I use paint, maybe some pens, some stencils. It's a very interesting process. So if painting with acrylic paints isn't for you, don't let that discourage you from starting an art journal. There are far more techniques that you could learn. If there's any in particular that you're interested in, comment below and I can set up a class or a video about them.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like additional content behind the scenes, additional techniques, please be sure to become a paid member of my channel. Thanks for joining me today.